Hello, this is Barry, and welcome to Rubik's Cube ABC Easy Beginner's Method. Now, to create this, I combined many ideas and added more of my own, and I'm sure it's the easiest way to learn to solve a cube. This first tutorial is simply the introduction. First, you need to know the sides and layers. Now, of course, there's coloured sides, white, blue, orange, yellow, red, etc. However, they have different names depending on which way you're facing. If I'm facing this side, that becomes the front side. If I'm facing this one, this becomes the front side. We usually have the white on top to start and the yellow on top to finish. So we often refer to the white side or the white layer, which is the same idea, and the yellow side or yellow layer. And of course, there's also a middle layer. Right, eh? White layer, middle layer, and yellow layer. All right. Now, there's various pieces in the cube. First of all, there's the all important centers. There's the center, and there's the center. They're opposing. Green center opposes the blue center, and the red center opposes the orange center, and they're fixed. I mean, you can you can spin them around, like I just showed you before. I can spin those centers around, but at no time does the orange ever stop being opposite the red. They are fixed in a frame. Same way the white is always opposite the yellow. I can spin that around too, and the white is always opposite the yellow. A magic little thing, isn't it? and so on. And uh, I'll show you the center of the whole thing. This is, uh, this is the framework of the cube. You can see how it's made so they can spin around. All right, there's actually three axes you can spin it around on, that way too. So uh, yeah, it's quite an ingenious little device. Very, very interesting and Revix invented this. But that's not all, that's not all. These centers are fixed in the framework as said, but the other pieces can all go all over the shop. Well, relatively speaking, but these are the corners. Now there's four corners there. Every side has four corners, a center and four edges. They're actually edge cubies, but we just abbreviate them to edges. I know this is the edge of the cube, edge of the whole cube, but we call these things edges, knowing what we're talking about, they're edge cubies. These are edges, these are corners, they're all abbreviated, we don't call corner pieces, we just call them corners. These are center pieces, we just call them centers. You just gotta know what we're talking about. Centers, corners, and edges, in talking about pieces, okay? Now, the sides of course meet the junctions. That's the white side meeting the orange side, and there's the junction of the two sides. Okay? The corner is the junction of three sides. Okay? And it's important to know that for a simple reason, that there are various home sides. I mean, this is the solved cube. Why is it solved? Because all the blues are on one side the home side for the blues. And all the orange are on one side, the home side for the orange, as determined by the center. The center tells you this is the home side for orange. This center tells you this is the home side for green. So to solve the cube, all those little cubies must be on the home side. But they can migrate, as I was saying before. The, uh, this corner could finish up down here. Or I can finish up over here, or I can finish up there. The corner can finish up, this corner could finish up in any one of those corners. Isn't that interesting? This edge can finish up on any edge. And there's four edges there. There's four edges here. Those edges could occupy, like any one of those edges can occupy any of those places. Of course, one thing can't happen, an edge can't become a corner. No, no, that doesn't happen. Corners are corners, edges are edges, and centers are centers. Okay? 
So that's how it works. It's quite an amazing little thing. And uh, Rubik is uh, quite an ingenious fellow to, uh, to come up with that. Now this turns, of course, you have to know. This, this is the important thing, it turns. There are turnings of the sides. If I turn the right side, then it's a right turn. If I turn it backwards, I better call it something else. What are we going to call it? Now, that's a right turn. That's a clockwise turn. If I turn it back anti-clockwise, you can't call that a right turn because we've got to know what we're talking about. There are different directions. So you can call it right clockwise and right anti-clockwise if you want to, but that's a long name. I just call this a right turn. You can call that a right anti-clockwise or a right inverse. Inverse is the opposite. That's a right turn, a right inverse. We abbreviate it even further because the first letter of inverse is I. So we, we have the right turn and the right eye. Right, right eye. Right, right eye. Just remember that the eye stands for counterclockwise, anti-clockwise turn. Now of course the same applies to all the sides. Here's the left side. Now, the clockwise turn on the left is the left turn. The anti-clockwise or inverse is left eye. So it's left and left eye. Can you see which way they go? You say, well, turn around to me, but that's just the thing. In the actual solving of the cube, you're not gonna have a chance to look at it. You've gotta know it from here. You've gotta imagine what you're seeing. So, I'm gonna do that now. Can you imagine the left turn, which way is it going to go? Left turn, ready? That's it, did you get it? I wonder. You say, that's not right. Because the right turn was that way, you turned it away. And now you're saying the left turn is turning towards you. Make up your mind. Now see, you can't work on turning it towards you, turning it away. What you've got to work on is clockwise. That's a clockwise turn, cheating a bit and showing you the side. That's a clockwise turn, that's a right turn. Okay, that way. The left turn, cheating a bit and showing you this side too. That's a clockwise turn. So, the right turn is that way, the left turn is that way. Okay, and you've just got to imagine the clock on the side. Left turn, left eye. Left, left eye. The front's a bit easier. I've done left and right. How about the front? The front is clockwise, front turn. That's a front. Front eye. Front. Front eye. That's the easy one. I'll give you a hard one now, which I think is the hardest one of the lot, is the, is the downside. Downside? Yeah, it's, the down, it's called the downside. I'll tell you why in a minute. Downside. You call it the downside, a downturn. Now where's a downturn? Can you imagine the clock down there without looking at it? I mean, that's, that's an upturn. That's the upside. Upturn, up eye. Up, up eye. Now, how about the down? You ready? Can you see the downturn? There it is. Did you get it? You say, that's not right. It is right. Let's look at it. I turned it that way, that's down clockwise, that's down. Now of course it's much easier if you turn them around to look at them, but you haven't got that luxury in the game, okay? You've just got to understand and imagine where the clocks are. Down, down eye, down, down eye. You might say, why do you call it up and down anyway? Why don't I call it top and bottom? Well you see, when you get very advanced in this sort of thing, you use abbreviations, or if you like, acronyms of the letters. So the right side's often just called an R, an R turn, and that's an RI. This is a, a left turn, or L, and that's an LI. L, LI. R, RI. Now, up, so it's U, UI. Down here we have D, D-I, 
Why don't you call it up and uh, top and bottom? Because the back's got a name too. And what's the back start with? B. So if you're going to use B for that, you can't use B for the bottom. Okay? So it's up and down. The sides again. All you tell remember what side you're looking at and what side's up here. Front, back, right, left, up, down. If I turn it around here, front, right, left, up, down, back. Depends which side you're facing at. Okay? Now, of course, there's one more thing you have to know is how to hold it. When we hold the cube, it's much easier to hold it with the thumb and tall man. That way, it's easier for two things. One, you can spin the top and bottom a lot easier if you want to do it that way. Or you can also make sure that you keep control of where the front side is because you'll learn that once you start an algorithm, you must maintain the front side. And how do you make sure you do it? By keeping a thumb on it, that's why, that's how. Now it won't turn and you won't be doing that because you've got your thumb here, that's the front side and you've got it there. Yeah? Okay, that's a, that's a big advantage. Now when we're solving it, we solve the white layer first, then we solve the middle layer, all right? And then we solve the yellow layer. That's how it works. Now you can solve the cube entirely by intuitive means, but it's a lot harder to learn. And what I've come up with this Rubik's Cube ABC Easy Beginner's method is the one you really all should start with because you've learned skills and tricks in this that will stand you in good stead if you do migrate to doing it by intuitive methods entirely. Okay, well that's it, that's the introduction and uh, we'll now proceed to the solving method and that's another story.